What's good, family? Shout out to the boss man, Johnny Boy Wilson, for boosting up your man the YB coin. So, we got some breaking news from your man's Tyson oh, Fury. He's spoken out on essentially his retirement situation, giving us some more details. And the article says Fury has said he wants Wilder to fight for the vacant WBC world title since he's the second best heavyweight the quotes exactly are I'd like to see Deontay Wilder fight whoever for it again although I don't know how that's even possible that Wilder is still ranked number one by the WBC he's lost three fights in a row and still number one rated but that's up to them however one thing I do know is that Deontay Wilder made 10 title defences, more than anybody else. He equalled Muhammad Ali's record of defences and beat Vitaly Klitschko's record of defences. He doesn't get the credit he deserves, and I do believe he's still the second best heavyweight in the world. Deontay Wilder. I believe he knocks out everybody else but me. So, it's... <laughs> yeah... It's a bit of a, that, them comments there were a bit of a weird one, in as much as he half punked Deontay Wilder by saying that he's not sure how he's still number one, which, to be honest, that's not even a punking, that's just true. It is odd that you can get topped three times. Or, but like Fury said, the thing is, I've always, be, me personally, I've always believed in dynamic rec rankings. For example, I don't believe you people should drop a whole bunch of places just because of a loss if... The people below them haven't done nothing either. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of the times these days, you can be at number one ranked, lose one fight. In fact, for example, AJ, yeah? Obviously, people know me know me and AJ fell out, yeah? And he going all the way through it because of that. He missed the YB, 100%. But <laughs> on a serious note, no matter what's happened in the past, AJ lost to Usyk, and now he's like number six behind people who have done absolutely nothing. I think there's some Don called... Some random Dons are in there who ain't done nothing. I don't believe in that. Rankings need to be dynamic based on more than just your last fight. It should... Resume and think form and whatever else should come into it. It shouldn't just be, well, you lost. you back down to number seven now. It should be relative. And it also should be to do with the fights the fans want to see. For example, in the past, I'll admit... Dillian White did have a claim in the past. He should have had a shot. He should have been able to get knocked out, spark out by Deontay Wilder back in 2018. Because that's what the fans wanted. The fans didn't want to see Wilder versus Ortiz twice. They didn't want to see Wilder versus Brazil. All them things didn't need to happen. I believe Dillian White's shot should have been in, what was it, 2019 when he fought Brazil. There's no way anyone wanted to see Deontay Wilder versus Brazil. The only person who wanted that was Deontay Wilder. That's wrong. The rankings should have changed since then. But yeah, addressing these claims from Fury about Wilder, I do agree. I think that might be a way to lure Wilder back. Surely, if Fury does vacate, that would be a nice one. But i got to say this. The first thing that came to mind when I watched this was, to some extent, my heart dropped. Because, do I think Fury going to retire now? I don't. But still, I don't even want to think about that. As someone who essentially eats from this game we can't afford or the YB can't afford for Fury to leave right now he <laughs> that's what that's what we do know can't afford it simple as that Fury you, you must stay because the YB can't afford you to leave right now <laughs> it really is as simple as that there's nothing else going on in this game especially since I mainly cover the heavyweights there's nothing going on you must stay you must at least for another year or so and get the rest of these cats these I mean there's it's not I wouldn't mind so much for example yeah when Lennox Lewis retired, it made sense. He was not only 38, he also could see the Wolves, i.e. the Vitali fight. There was genuine competitors coming up who he, need, who he needed to be wary of, to some extent. So I get that. Yeah? Now, if Tyson Fury was 38 now, it'd make more sense. But the fact that, number one, Tyson Fury is still improving, he's only 34, the competition around... There isn't no Vitaly Klitschko's knocking around, I don't believe. There just isn't. Yeah? And also, on a 
risk versus reward basis, there's a the whole bunch of cash waiting to be cashed in. I think it's almost, it would be, what's the word? It would be neglectful not to cash in them easy checks, I believe. Especially now when Tyson Fury's fame is just exponentially building. I think he'd do his legacy. I think he'll look back. Think about it, you're only 34. If you retire at 36, 37, you've still got 30 years to work out what to do. And I think if Fury gets to 45 and he's retired now, he'll look back and say that was silly. Because 34 is just too young, given where Fury is today. Given his position in the heavyweight boxing scene. It's clear his league's above everyone, so why not? Why not make that run for number one all time? Yeah, because I, be, I don't believe you can categorically say today he's number one all time. But if he carries on, if he knocks out AJ, knocks out Usyk, knocks out Joe Joyce, there will be a serious argument for number one all time based on that. Because people like to talk about Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis never stopped no one. Oops, he just didn't. He'd go like he'd go to points with most people. Boring. That's just what it was, people. I hate to break it to you. It's a fact. Now, to be fair, was he fighting a more wholesome division? Yeah, probably. That is a fair thing statement to make. He was fighting a mo much more wholesome division. When you think about Vitali, even Tua. Although Tua, I guess... Yeah, well, yeah Tua, Tua's leagues above Chisora, isn't he? I'd have thought. But yeah, so that is also a fair thing. That's the thing. It's difficult to compare eras. But when you think about Fury's attributes i.e. six foot nine if Fury continues to demonstrate serious one punching power I, I don't know it's going to be difficult i can't see how you someone will get round people forget that lennox lewis he was one of the giants of his era lennox lewis is would be an average looking ass heavyweight today yeah he wouldn't be nothing special lennox lewis was the big tall long one he'd be he'd fury would make him would make it a, a super hard night for lennox because, guess what, Dillian White, six foot three, six foot four. Yeah, there's nothing special today. That's the going rate. Now, I'm not saying it's all about height, but height, anyone who box knows, a good, tall, big man, it's, you've got to be, well, you've got to be super. You've got to have supercharged genetics, something like Mike Tyson. And, and even then, to be honest, we don't know if Mike in his prime, I'd like to think Mike in his prime would have smoked Lennox Lewis, but... Who know, you don't know, do you? You don't know if that that, that extra f three quarters of a feet would have just been too much. And Fury is another half a foot above that, do you understand? So imagine Tyson Fury versus a prime Mike Tyson. If Fury just wanted to backpedal all, all night, it really would. I think it's a hard man to beat. And then throw in there the fact that Fury might now have power. It's one thing... Running like for example in the second fight against Chizora, Chizora was able to run forward all night. But the question now is, back then in 2014, in the second fight, Chizora was able to run forward, knowing okay, it's Tyson Fury, but he doesn't train for power. He's just going to be running backwards like prey all night. Now, it's kind of look at Dillian White. Yeah. Now the question is, damn, I can't afford to run forward because I'm going to walk onto a shot and go sleepy. <laughs> Do you understand? So it brings in a whole nother dimension. For all we know, Mike Tyson come running forward and clip. I wouldn't have thought so because Mike Tyson is much more slippery than Chisora or or Dillian White. But still, them sort they're the sort of questions you start having to flesh through now. But anyway, the point is, people, there's way too much to be done for Tyson Fury, and I do think it will be selfish for him. It will be selfish to the whole lot of it. He just there's no there's no time to go now. It don't make no sense now. Bottom line, it don't make no sense to no one now to go, yeah? Again, even Paris, I've got a video coming soon, even Paris admitted that she kind of wants him to stay. Yeah, of course, she'd rather have him at home, but I think she even realises, listen, there's a whole bunch of free money on the table, there's a whole bunch of free clout on the table, why not see where this ends? Where? Why not see where we can take this? And, or... I'm not saying Fury should continue until he loses. I'm saying he should continue until he feels he's reached his physical peak. Do you know what I'm saying? When Fury starts feeling, you know what, I'm not getting better anymore, that's different. Do you know what I'm saying? If Fury's telling me that last night against Dillian, 
he felt that he's kind of it's starting to plateau. I get that. You know what? I'm not making any more improvements. I'm starting to plateau. I'm out of here. I get that completely. But if from what we've heard from Fury, from what we've seen from Fury, he's getting better. Why? Why leave them questions out there? Why you don't want to get to 45 and be thinking, damn man, I wonder how, I wonder how great I really could have been. And like I said, it's not as if there's a whole bunch of killers that you're thinking, damn man, it's going to be super dangerous for me. I'm not saying Fury needs to take the piss and stop not training, but if Fury's committing himself as he's been doing with Sugar Hill, the rest of the rest of these cats, in my opinion, are food. I don't see not even the up and coming ones. Joe Joyce too slow. Fury would have a I'm not sure he'd be able to KO Joe, Joe Joyce, but that's the great thing about it. Fury is that good now. He should be he should be going into fights as he's been doing. And none of these guys should be making it the distance in my opinion. Joe Joyce is so slow. Fury should just be able to have a good good stiff heavy back session and touch him all over. Yeah? Head toe you know what I mean? Head toe what's that song? <laughs> Do the whole, do the hokey cokey, yeah. One of them ones. Do the whole cokey, and you turn it around, yeah, hundred percent, head toe, all that kind of stuff. Touch all them ones. That's what you should be doing with Joe Joyce, and go for the stoppage. And everyone else, Johnston gets stopped easy. He got no chin. Yeah, he'll go straight down, hundred percent. He won't want it anyway. To be fair, Fury probably pop him in the mouth, and Johnston will go running and turn, turn it into a marathon, hundred percent. We already saw what happened when AJ gets scared, he go running. Yeah, he ran around for Mr. Blobby. So, let's not, let's not make out he's going to do something. But all these guys are food. Yeah, simple as that. Every single one. So why not? It doesn't make no sense. It would be a travesty for um, for uh, Tyson Fury to retire now. It's a bit like Andre Ward. Andre Ward for me, although there wasn't anyone left, which is probably a fair argument also for Fury, after Usyk and AJ... Even then, I'd kind of get it. Do do Usyk and or AJ, and then it makes sense because there is no more big names. I get that argument, but now, now, as in just after Dillian, no, I, you can't. It, no, it's a no for me. You can't retire now. Don't make no sense. Um, and like I said about Andre Ward, Andre Ward, yeah, there weren't really no names, but he left too much on the table for me. Yeah, imagine now. You'd have the Andre Ward versus Canelo, or a few years ago, two years ago, it would have been Andre Ward versus Canelo. Now, assuming Alvarez goes on to beat um, Bivol and Baturbiev, then that would have been obviously if Alvarez loses to Bivol and Baturbiev, I think Andre Ward was a class above them too. So, if Al Alvarez loses anyway, then I guess, I guess it's not so bad. But even the bottom line is, going too early, it's all well and good, oh well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't like the idea of it, and I wouldn't do it, if I was at that level, and it's, it's almost a waste, yeah, you're so, you're doing these big 90,000, 100,000 stadiums, and you've only just started doing that, it's not like, for example, AJ, someone needs to tell him to sit down somewhere and retire, because you're on the downslide, <laughs> you ain't doing nothing, you ain't making no improvements, you're going backwards, you're no good, and no one trying to watch you no more, apart from your goofy fanboys. Someone need tell him to retire. He pissed people off, selling fake ass pay per views to watch you play touch butt and play sparring. Yeah, he need to retire. Johnson need to retire because he on the bottom anyway. But whilst you're on the top and improving, that's when you carry on. It's as simple as that. If Tyson Fury right now has found a nice little niche for himself, as in he's found a little groove. People forget as well, AJ has been training his whole life, don't take no time off, and still he useless. Fury really, Fury would have six weeks in gym, three months off. So now he's gone to the full, that's when you really start to see the gains. When you're in camp, back to back to back to back to back. You don't see, look at Billy Joe. Billy Joe stagnate because he go in camp for eight weeks and out of the gym for a year. <laughs> you don't make no gains doing that. Yeah? So again, even more reason to carry on. Let's see where you can take this. That's what the fans want to see. That's what you owe it to yourself. That's what you owe it to your legacy. That's what you owe it to your kids. As long as you, as long as you feel sharp and you're getting sharper and you're not on the decline, carry on. Now, if you want if you say, "Listen, I'm on the decline," I get it, but that ain't the case. Hundred percent, no doubt. And Wilder, he can, he can wait somewhere. Wilder can, Wilder don't need no belt right now. He can fight some other people. Go and fight. Go and knock Dillian out. That'll be a great fight right now. 
Yeah, Dillian versus White. I mean, Wilder versus White. Perfect. Yeah, really, it should. This is how it should be, in my opinion. Fury right now is a super champion. He's the he's the world undisputed super champion. So really, what I think should happen is Wilder versus Joyce. Wilder versus Joyce, and then AJ versus Usyk, and then the winner of Wilder and Joyce fight the winner of Usyk and AJ. Then that guy, so the winner of that fight, then fights the super champ Fury. Because that'll be the bad... Whoever wins that, them two, whoever comes out on top of them four would be the bad mind. He'd be the real bad one. Because at the moment, the winner of AJ and Usyk don't really mean much to me. Mm. We've seen, we've just seen Usyk go life and death with... We've, we've seen Usyk go life and death with Chisora. So, <laughs> yeah, we've seen... I mean, Joyce, yeah, but that's the bottom line for me. That's what needs to happen now, but... Well, unfortunately, if we if this was the UFC, yeah, that's what would happen. Fury would be the uh, super champion, and you'd have Joyce versus Wilder and AJ versus Usyk, and that's how it would go. But we don't live them times. We live in these weird times with five belts, and it's all all over the place. It's all fake news. But either way, what we know is Fury can't retire 100%.